Greetings viewers, I am Eric the Car Guy and I'm also known as ETCG1 and thank you for tuning in today. But more importantly, if it is your birthday, I want to wish you a very special happy birthday and offer you this digital confection. Please enjoy it. All right, I seem to be getting a lot of mileage out of my stolen catalytic converter. In fact, the victim is behind me now and I'm about to replace the engine. But I thought I would loop back because, well, there was a couple of comments that was I found very interesting uh, to the latest video I posted about what happens to catalytic converters after they're stolen. I'll link that in the description. If not, put a link up somewhere here for you. Anyway, let's recap. Uh, the reason why catalytic converters are being stolen at an alarming rate recently is because of three precious metals. There's platinum, palladium, and rhodium. And catalytic converters contain these elements so that they can perform their function of cleaning up basically NOx and a bit of CO emission. And they do this by coating a ceramic substrate, often by coating a ceramic substrate. There's a couple of different types. But quite commonly, um, they coat this, this is a piece of ceramic here, and a part of an actual catalytic converter. Uh, that has broken apart. But normally this contains those precious metals uh, that are responsible for cleaning up those toxic emissions. I think the difference in price between an original equipment catalytic converter and an aftermarket catalytic converter is taking into account the amount of metals, precious metals such as platinum, that they put into them. I recently installed a catalytic converter on this Honda Odyssey. And if you look at the original equipment, Honda catalytic converter, it is filled, the entire inside of that component is filled with a ceramic substrate that is coated with those metals. The aftermarket one that I just installed only has about a quarter of that catalytic converter full of this kind of ceramic substrate. So it's basically a hollow pipe except for the very end of it. And I suspect they put the bare minimum amount of materials in that in order to, well, keep the price down but also to basically make the converter compliant with the vehicle's emission system. So in other words, the vehicle is going to see that the catalytic converter, catalytic converter is doing its job enough to where it's not going to trip a check engine light, but it won't last as long as an original equipment one. What this boils down to is catalytic converter thieves are more on the lookout for those uh, high dollar converters, those original equipment converters over aftermarket ones. Most of the people that have been hit are driving around with the aftermarket ones, which reduces their chances. I I think for a second theft, but still having to deal with that in the first place is, is well, it sucks. And this kind of goes back to a video that I did on Air at the Car Guy about cleaning catalytic, converter, catalytic converters a while back. And there were some complaints that I wasn't using the cleaner properly. I, d I did three different videos. Once I tried with lacquer thinner in the fuel tank, that didn't quite work out so well. Then I tried uh, soap and water, then sodium hydroxide, I think it was. None of those things worked. Well, the reason why those things didn't work, or the reason I surmised that those things didn't work is because those precious metals that were coating the ceramic had gone away. They're, they were, went out the tailpipe, so to speak. So the catalytic converter was no longer as effective as it was when it was new. And somebody has taken this a step further, further and there is a, a YouTube channel called Cody's Lab. Cody surmises that there are about two to three grams of platinum in original equipment converters, some original equipment converters. And after about 100,000 miles, he surmises that about 50% of those metals are gone that allow this thing to perform its function. And and where do those materials go? Well, they go out your tailpipe and onto whatever road you're driving on, around the side of the road. So he took it one step further and decided to take, I guess you'd call it a sample from the side of a highway. Did this at three o'clock in the morning. This is not advisable for you to do. It's not safe to do these things along the side of the highway, not to mention illegal. So he goes along the side of the highway, gathers up a bunch of debris, and basically mines it. So he takes all that debris and sifts out all the large chunks and then finally gets to a point where he puts it into uh, an oven, heats it up, ends up with a little bit of platinum and I think a little bit of palladium as well. I don't know about rhodium. He surmises that after that experiment, there's about 6.7 grams of platinum uh, per ton along that, within that debris contained on the side of the highway. And that's pretty, in, pretty significant and pretty interesting. In fact, you catalytic converter thieves out there <laughs> might consider a different line of work. Uh, but more importantly, I think stuff like this, say for instance, uh, the federal government started mining this stuff from the side of the highway. So they got some street sweeping equipment and they collected all this material. 
and mine these materials out and then sold them to pay for like in infrastructure, things like that. Now, I honestly don't know how realistic that is to do, but it's interesting that, well, the precious metals inside of catalytic converters are ending up along the side of the road. Gold mining is similar in a sense, and I, I wonder if sometime in the distant future they will be mining uh, where former highways were for platinum and palladium in the same way they look for gold in ancient riverbeds now. Uh, so I wonder if the same is true for this highway mining, in that you could go along the side of the highway and if you were able to collect enough material and process it and do this economically, that you could potentially turn huge profits because the reason catalytic converters are being stolen at the rates that they are is because the prices of these metals have skyrocketed, in particular rhodium. But he was finding platinum and palladium, which have also gone up significantly in price. But if you think, okay, 6.7 grams, almost seven grams per ton of platinum that you could mine from the highway system in the US, that's a significant amount of money that you could get back and you could recoup a lot of those resources that, well, we're having a lot of trouble finding now. That's the other side of this. Not only is there high demand for these metals, but they're kind of scarce at the moment. It's food for thought as far as, let's call it a more legitimate way, of making money from catalytic converters that doesn't involve stealing them. <laughs> I want to offer you solutions here. Once again, food for thought. I'm curious about your comments on this. I'll look for those down below. I will also put uh, information down in the description, including the video that I mentioned where Cody's lab went out and performed this experiment and any other additional information that I might find. If you have automotive questions that I did not cover in this video, I ask that you head to airatthecarguy.com, also linked down in the description. Thank you so much for watching today. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty, and I will see you next week.